Hi guys, so welcome back. Thanks for clicking. So this man asked this question: Where did God come from? By Dr. Kate Ovi. I am confused. Being philosophically consistent and being a very honest person, I'm sure you can tell me where God came from. And in addition, in addition, once you've told me where God comes from, uh, please try to clarify how you can figure that a spiritual force can have an impact on a material universe to create it. I think that some years ago we already talked about that kind of thing in uh, philosophical circles at any rate by posing the question, if angels are made of uh, spiritual matter and a pin is made of material matter and spiritual matter displaces no space, how many angels can dance on the tip of a pen. <laughs> I have a sense of sort of uh, uh, reversal experience here, but, but please do, go ahead. you got five minutes. Now, I just want to know which question. That's all right, you may take the rest of the minute. We're supposed to do one question at a time. Which one would you like? That was part of the format for the debate. So which, which question? I want you to fill in the story of the rest of the uh, beginning of the universe. God, spiritual matter, impact on material matter. Okay, so two questions. All right. Go ahead. All right, your question, where did God come from, assumes that you're thinking of the wrong, uh, obviously it displays that you're thinking of the wrong God, <laughs> because the God of the Bible d is not affected by time, space, or matter. If he's, if he's affected by time, space, or matter, he's not God. Yeah. Time, space, and matter is what we call a continuum. All of them have to come into existence at the same instant, because if there were matter but no space, where would you put it? If there were matter and space but no time, when would you put it? You cannot have time, space, or matter independently. They have to come into existence simultaneously. The Bible answers that in ten words. In the beginning, there's time. God created the heaven. There's space. And the earth. There's matter. So you have time, space, matter created a trinity of trinities there. Just, you know, time is past, present, future. Space has length, width, height. Matter has solid, liquid, gas. You have a trinity of trinities created instantaneously. And the God who created them has to be outside of them. If he's limited by time, he's not God. The guy who created this computer is not in the computer. He's not running around in there changing the numbers on the screen, okay? The God who created this universe is outside of the universe. He's above it, beyond it, in it, through it. He's, he's unaffected by it. So for... And the, the concept that a, a spiritual uh, force cannot have any effect on a material body, well then I guess you'd have to explain to me things like emotions and love and hatred and envy and jealousy and, and rationality. I mean, if your brain is just a random collection of chemicals that formed by chance over billions of years, how on earth can you trust your own reasoning processes and the thoughts that you, you think? Okay? So, um, I, your, your, your question, where did God come from, is assuming a limited God, and that's your problem. The God that I worship is not limited by time, space, or matter. If I could fit the infinite God in my three-pound brain, he would not be worth worshiping, that's for certain. So that's the God that I worship. Thank you. Wow, that was a beautiful answer. The best answer you could ever get. You know, God is not a time, space, or matter. If you can describe where God comes from, then why are you worshipping him? Nobody knows how he's created. You can only imagine his supremacy, you can only imagine how powerful God is, his designs and what that he does. But anything that will make you know where God comes from, it will lead to disrespect. And there's no point in you worshipping him. Then it's dangerous. Like the man said, the man gave the best answer. He's not limited. He's not a limited God. He's not a God that you need to, you know, try to compare. It's not a human being. It's only a human being that you can say, oh, where is he from? Where are you from? Where and here? But God is not a human being, so nobody can know where he comes from. It's a beautiful God. No matter how you, you want to think it, don't let us overthink it and keep asking ourselves, no. There's no need for us to think how, where God comes from. Who God is. Some people even ask this question that who, who gave birth to God because they'll be wondering how did God create himself. So I'm sure some people would have thought about it several times that if God created human beings, you know, nature, animals, then who created God? How did God, you know, who gave birth to God? 
you can answer that question because he's omnipotent, he's omnipresent, he's the unchangeable changer, he's a person that you can only feel his presence but you cannot see him. That's why we, if we can try to acknowledge him, we can only try to imagine how God is by saying he's a big God, he's this, he's that, he's no. But nobody knows where God come from. That was a beautiful one. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.